Good morning, everybody, and uh, my name is Luca. And uh, I'm Oli. Nice meeting you all again. And um, we were part of the Young, young Vision Leaders Group uh, that developed the Young Professionals Vision uh, for a water and food secure world by 2050. And uh, as, a first, as a first thing, I would like to start with a question to you, to the audience. And uh, the question is, how many of you are going to be retired in 10 years? Could you please put your hand up, please? Well, it's, it's quite a... <laughs> There are many of you, perhaps uh, more than half of the theater. And uh, so that's why uh, we are here on this stage today. It's one of the reasons why we are here uh, presenting this. And uh, relatively speaking, um, Oli and I have just started uh, our careers in, in the water sector, in the water development sector. And we are part of the generation that uh, will be called upon to complement your work and solve the challenging that we now face by 2050. In uh, 2050, I think I'll be 65 years. Uh, how old are you going to be, Honeymoon? I'm going to be 65. As yeah. well? Okay. And uh, we will be still working in this field uh, with some time less until uh, retirement. So from now to 2050, uh, my contemporaries and, and I, we have to think about what do we, do we want our world to look like and uh, what are the solutions that uh, we need to implement in order to overcome the challenges that, uh, that we face right now. So that's why we engage with many young professionals during this past week. During this past week, we had a lot of formal and informal discussions with people our age. And we wanted, or the main point behind these discussions was to realize what it meant for them to have a world that was food secure and water secure by 2050. And not only that, because that's a pretty part of the discussion, but also what could be some of the solutions, very specific ones that we could put in place to reach that vision. And what are the main challenges in terms of policy, understanding that were there and that we needed to find solutions to also. So we tweet, we blog, we made them record videos. Some of them even sent us their writing input to our emails. And we took that together and tried to put it, to, uh, put it together in a coherent way. And we're here now today to present the results of those discussions. So uh, what this world in 2050 will look like? The world in 2050 is uh, equal access to improved sanitation, safe water, food, and health and well-being. is a world where a woman doesn't need to work uh, three hours to fetch water for her household. The world in 2050 is one where there's healthy ecosystems. It's one where we understand that ecosystem services are there for our own good and that we have to protect them for ours and future generations. The world in 2050 is uh, inclusivity in decision making, where actually traditional stakeholders like business, governments, work along with uh, often neglected stakeholders like uh, indigenous people, women and young people. The world in 2050 is one that looks beyond 2050, that takes in consideration 2100, that cares about the impacts that, the, that our own use in resources will have on future generations, and that seeks, again, as I mentioned, to protect it for them. The world in 2050 is informed, aware, and proactive citizens that value food and water and use wisely resources. The world in 2050 is one where there's transparency and accountability, where every citizen, and that means businesses, it means students, it means government, it means institutions like CWI, understand their responsibility and are held accountable for their role in society. The world in 2050 is cooperation, which builds upon trust and recognition of the interdependencies among each other. So, is, it is a very idealized world, and the challenges we face together are extremely hard. How we naive? Um, we, would, we would rather call ourselves the generation of the adaptive idealists. And why do we mean by this? that we recognize that the vision that we presented here 
it's one that we all share in this room. It's one that businesses have. It's one that civil society have. But we recognize that, again, that the challenges are varied and that the world changes every day rapidly and that uncertainty, even though we have many models, is the only thing that we can be certain of. So, but we got some solutions. We got some practical solution from where we should start. And uh, so where we should start from? Where we should start from engage, uh, embracing a more resource efficient diet, which use uh, less water, energy, and land. We must start by wasting less food. And that means like looking at our production processes and understand that they have to be improved from the moment of, from the post-Harvard moment. Additionally, that we have to address consumer behavior in developed nations. We should start from increasing sustainable investments in agriculture that uh, um, will balance the, the infrastructure, investments in infrastructure and investments in capacity buildings. We should start from promoting enabling conditions, and that means by recognizing that the institutions that we have are not necessarily the best ones to address global challenges, and that we must promote them to be stronger and to be able to, to deal with these challenges, and that policy must respond to that, as well as our incest incentive systems. And, of course, we need to like, educate ourselves as policymakers and the rest of the world. We should start to boosting sustainable intensification. Again, produce more with less, uh, and uh, um, coupling along technological innovation, what is the behavioral change? Click it again. Oh, sorry. And of course, we need to understand the link between water, energy, and the food security nexus. And that basically, it's what this picture represents, that we need different resources to produce something, and that along the river, the hydropower plant, the fishermen, and the farmer needs the water to maintain their livelihoods. We should start from develop resource recovery and reuse, recognizing that in our ways there are still resources that can be reused, like water, like nutrients, like organic matter, like energy. We must start by empowering communities. People like women, young people, they know the challenges that we, they face and we must give them the conditions so they, are, they take ownership of their own solutions. We should start from sharing our failures rather than talking always about our successes. We must start by boosting fair trade markets. We should start from adopting business model perspective in development projects in order to guarantee sustainab long-term sustainability. And finally, I know everybody read the picture now. <laughs> <laughs> we must start, and always is something that we need to be reminded, by being adaptive. And when we find solutions that work, as the business m uh, representative in the room said, we have to find the ways to scale them up. So, as we said, all the solution, these solutions are, um, are solutions from where we can start, but uh, we recognize they may change to adapt to an uncertain future. Now, I think we talked too much, and we want to share with you some of the thoughts and opinions that our colleagues said throughout this week, and we put them together in a short video clip that we're going to play for you. It's here. Just click on the picture and on the middle. I did. Yes. Okay. I know. Is that they opened the wrong one? This one. Yeah. Change policy cohesion. The education of the of the youth. The sensibiliser. Um, cultural and um, also religious value. Human development process is in the harmonized and in a sustainable way. New direction for upscaling their uh, knowledge. 
technological innovation, global cooperation, simplicity, integration of business perspectives into development initiatives, desalination of seawater, kitchen gardening, to appreciate water and to have more accessibility te technology. <laughs> to connect uh, agricultural markets, energy markets with uh, sanitation markets. Waste less food. Raise young water professionals. Access to education about water. To educate children. Using and recognizing indigenous and lo local knowledge. Shared community gardens. Business and finance is harnessed for good. It's including both men and women in the decision-making process. Learning lessons and sharing knowledge. To promote youth participation in water debate. A world that doesn't have to struggle for clean, accessible water. Collaboration. So just do it. Go out and do it. Get your hands dirty and get your feet dirty. So, um, you have heard our vision and uh, our ideas, and now we look forward to working with you, and we really hope that our enthusiasm, energy and commitment will synergize with your experience, because we need to start this journey with you. Thank you.